This is Donna with More Than a Review, and I am thrilled to be here with Amy. We are going to talk about her um, career going from a corporate lawyer to writing um, women's fiction and now romance or suspense and thrillers. So, kind of give us your um, kind of give us your summary of like how does that happen? How do you go from yeah different? How does that happen? You know, <laughs> I'm sort of I'm still sort of surprised. Yeah, I left a lot. I mean, I was always. Growing up and, um, you know, initially professionally, I was always going to be a lawyer. I was never going to be anything else. Although I always wrote creatively and I, in college, sort of pursued creative writing alongside my pre-law classes, but then I just quickly abandoned um, creative writing just thinking that I really couldn't pursue them both. And, um, and so for about 13 years, I practiced law and I wrote professionally, but I wrote always in someone else's voice. So I didn't leave the law to to write um, fiction, but I really left the law to catch my breath. But after I um, left and, and was able to catch my breath and took a one-year sabbatical, I got this idea for a novel about a woman at a crossroads in her life and sort of rethinking a lot of choices. So um, probably not surprisingly <laughs> that that was the, the idea that I came up with at that time in my life and, and pursued it over the next couple of years and it became my debut novel. So, um, for any lawyers out there that are even thinking about leaving, yeah. it sounds like there might be a few. Yeah, I was yeah. researching. Yeah, there are a lot. <laughs> so, what advice do you give them if they want to start writing creatively? So, the funny thing is, the um, American Bar Association contacted me to write a book called Lawyer Interrupted about um, leaving the practice of law, which is something about 50% of all lawyers want to do. Uh -huh. <laughs> so, very interesting. Um, and it's really about a lot of people ask, like, why would the Bar Association want that book? But it's really about the versatility of the law degree and I always I do a lot of talks around the country to lawyers who want to leave the law and inevitably somebody wants to write a book right and so um, we talk a lot about that and it's not a perfect transition um, so there's a lot of um, sort of work on the I always tell as lawyers who aspire to write fiction um, that there's a lot to work on in terms of transition of craft and things like that and it's not a neat and easy transition um, which was a surprise to me and is a surprise to a lot of lawyers that just because we write write and wrote professionally for so long why isn't this easier to transition to fiction writing because um, you you think that we are writing a lot of fiction but we're not <laughs> so yeah so um, it's about patience and really um, research and learning, which lawyers are really good at, so they, they do transition to novelists very well. So bringing up research, do you have to do a lot of research yeah. for the novel? Yeah, that's one of my favorite parts. I do like that part of it. Um, so there's always, in my novels, there's always, I try to always do something that is, you know, a little, um, even, even if it's the setting or something about the plot that will involve some research and and I'm um, kind of stepping outside the box a little bit. Yeah. yeah. Well, so let's talk about why we lie. Yeah. I keep having to mention it's fiction. It's right. Not, not fiction. <laughs> I think it was a title like that. Yeah. We, we don't for know. Sure. For sure. <laughs> so tell us a little bit about. Yeah. This so why we lie is set in D.C. and it opens um, with this is how the book opens. It doesn't give anything away. It's uh, it's uh, an aspiring politician and he uh, has just been shot and he makes it out of surgery even though he's not expected to um, but his wife basically gets this diagnosis that he his brain is overcompensating on itself to heal and he has lost his ability to lie and so the politician who can't lie you think that's the story but of course it's not that's the the rub is that it's really not a big deal for him that he's not able to lie he's he's he might be one of the good ones um, but it's a really big deal for his wife and we sort of unravel um, a pretty intricate mystery that she's part of and, and her backstory um, becomes really important and uh, unravels for the story so yeah so your characters what would they say about you after you wrote that book <laughs> what would my characters say about me um, I don't know they I I love my characters and I get probably a little too attached to my characters so um, they would definitely um, well, for example, my debut novel, um, those characters stayed with me for so long that I'm actually writing the follow-up book to them. So, <laughs> so I think, yeah, I think the characters are um, definitely, I get very attached to them, yeah, yeah, for sure. Yeah. And I think I don't write, I don't write autobiographical books, but for sure my characters are, are um, you know, kind of, combinations of a lot of different people and a lot of different experiences that I have had. My legal career did start in DC 
um, many years ago, over 20 years ago. Um, I loved practicing law in DC and I loved my experiences in DC, so the bad guys are not influenced <laughs> by the bad guys in DC, but, um, but for sure there were influences yeah. to, to my experience there and to my whole legal career that are, that are found in this book for sure. That's what I wonder too, yeah. if you have had just so many situations that you are exposed to that those are going to end up in a book. Yeah, or yeah, for sure, for yeah. good or for bad. Yeah. <laughs> uh, what do you think um, your readers would be surprised to know about you? Oh, well, um, they would probably be surprised to know that I, um, I don't necessarily, um, I don't necessarily write every single day. I don't necessarily write my novel, work on novels every single day, but I am writing something, um, whether it's, uh, an article pitch or a marketing pitch or um, my day job I work for I do development for a private school and I've always worked in startup and nonprofit world so sometimes when I just need inspiration for my novels I'll find something else to write so that will um, kind of you know help inspire the the novel writing process oh that's even a good advice yeah for I think so yeah I've learned that along the way um, from other writing mentors and I've tried to employ that too sometimes you have to step away from the yeah. The story, the bigger story that you're working on, and um, but you have to keep exercising the writing muscle, of course. Yeah. yeah. So you are involved in a lot of stuff. Yeah. So <laughs> what's some advice on how you're able to balance all of that? Yeah, I don't know if it's really about balance or it's really about making decisions about, you know, I'm very deliberate. Even though I am involved in a lot of things, I'm very deliberate about the things I'm involved in. They have to be, um, they have to be authentic. They have to, you know, definitely feed the creative, the creative energy. Um, so I've, and I was not as good about that starting out in the writing journey as I am now. So I try to kind of cut away things that sort of drain the, the creative process. Um, but, um, I, so yeah, so I just try to really work on projects, both writing and otherwise that are going to really feel like they're feeding the creative energy. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. So let's, um, so you have a book coming out next year. Yeah. So tell us a little bit about that one. Yeah. So I know how this ends is the follow up to my debut novel. So five years later now, um, so Lemongrass Hope was my debut novel and it's sort of a time bending, um, romance book that is again, centers around a woman who's kind of rethinking a lot of choices she made and she gets this sort of glance at what, what could have been different. And the ending was uh, somewhat ambiguous and I always knew that it was going to be interpreted that way and that I always thought that it was going to be kind of interpreted one of two ways. And then as I started doing book clubs and talking about the book I realized it was actually being interpreted a lot of different <laughs> ways which I found really fascinating. And then when people would say to me, aren't you going to write a follow-up? I'd say, well, no, now I can't because there's just so many different sort of interpretations out there. So um, for a long time, I resisted the idea of writing a follow-up. And then um, I got a, what I thought was a really good idea. My publisher also agreed. And so now, five years later, the, the the follow-up. It's not. I say it's not a sequel, and um, it's not a prequel. We're calling it a paraquel. So it's sort of like another chapter of the story. But we get to revisit the characters from my first book, but some new ones. Yeah. And um, I'm really excited about it. Yeah. Oh, that is awesome. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Thank you. So I want to also tell book clubs, don't give up, because you can yeah. convince the author to make the sequel or at least follow through. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> uh, but thank you so much, yeah, Amy, for thank joining you. us. And again, it's why we lie. Um, a very interesting storyline. Yeah, thank you. So thank that's you so much. Well, so thank, you. thank you. Good. Thank right, you. Thanks, guys. <laughs>